everybody. My name is Claire Rees uh, from Interbiz Sweden, and I have the pleasure to introduce the amazing Anil Gupta with me today. <laughs> hi, Anil. <laughs> hey, hi. Thank you, Claire, for inviting me. I'm so excited to uh, talk to your listeners and viewers. It is fantastic. It's fantastic that you're here. Thank you. Um, just to introduce Anil. Um, Neil, first of all, he's going to be talking about how to earn more money, be happier, improve your communications and get more done. I think we all need that. Get more done. <laughs> um, and Neil is a world expert on relationships and happiness. He has coached some of the most famous celebrities on the planet, like Tony Robbins and Les Brown, top athletes. No, 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 no. Okay. I didn't coach them. I didn't coach them. Okay, this is where it's, I it's, No, it's important to know, you know, that we, we can't be, you know, we have to have integrity. I've, wor I've worked with Les and I've worked Good. with Tony, but okay. I've never coached them. Okay. Um, and am I right then to say they've been a guest speaker with Sir Richard Branson at the Nectar Island? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, and Neil enjoys helping people overcome obstacles that prevent them from living a full fit life and has appeared on stages all over the world. Um, he's appeared at Harvard on a number of occasions and a guest speaker for Fox News. Yes. And he's also the best selling author of Immediate Happiness. <laughs> Perfect. You got it. I got it right. Uh, so I think um, it'd be great if we can start off and if you can just talk, because you've got a happiness formula, um, Anil. Yes. So if you could just explain to the viewers about your happiness uh, formula, that'd be great. Yeah. So the formula is this, happiness stroke fulfillment equals G cubed. The first G is you have to give yeah. your time, your energy, your love, your commitment, your joy, your gift, your money. Give it away so that you're not expecting anything in return. A lot of people give, but they want something in return. Mm -hmm. But that's not really giving. So giving is uh, without any attachment or expectation. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, what act of kindness or what giving did you do today? That I did today? Yes. What have I done today that's good, <laughs> as I've given? Yeah. I, gave, I gave my husband some good advice. Okay. And I didn't do that... anything in, to, in return. Okay, good. How did that make you feel? It made me feel good because I seen the penny drop in his face and, and, um, and he felt good because he accepted the good advice as well. Good. Where else did you give today? What else have I? Well, I've given the viewers you, Anil. Good. Where <laughs> else? Uh, did I give you some advice today, at Caroline? Because I normally give you some good advice. No, it was the other way around. So I can yeah, I can claim that I gave you <laughs> advice. Um, so yeah, it was the other way. So it, but we both gave to one another, and you had the reward for me given, which was no expectation on my behalf. Yeah, I can't sort of feel sorry for myself day to day. And Caroline gave me a good advice today. <laughs> good. So when you receive Carol's advice, you're actually giving something back to Carol. Okay. Yeah. When your husband received the gift from you, he's mm. also giving back to you because you felt great. Yeah. And see? Yeah. You see how this works? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit more. Where else did you give? And there's a reason I'm doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then I ran a hotel down the road and um, the people were arriving today and normally we don't leave anything for them, like, fruit and and some cereal and, and some things like that but because this is like the first sort of customers of the season i decided to leave them some nice gifts fantastic what, what else did you do to give today you gave yourself a shower claire <laughs> My ex. i've got i've got smelly vision <laughs> <laughs> that's self-care you gave yourself self-care it's quite yeah. crucial yeah showered i did thank you caroline <laughs> Now, Caroline is absolutely right. The reason I'm digging deeper is because oh. people don't realize that they give a lot. Did you feed the dogs? I didn't feed the dog, but I fed my dog, yes. Yeah, you fed the dog, you know? Yeah. So okay. it's yeah. the little things that are the big things, you know? Did you feed someone? Did you look after someone? Did you thank someone? Did you acknowledge someone? Did yeah. you help someone? Did you talk to someone? Did you cheer someone up? 
Yeah. So people forget, they think that giving is a big thing, but it's not a big thing. It's the little things that add up to the big thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, giving yourself, you know, loving yourself, appreciation, talking to yourself nicely. It's a giving. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's a muscle. As you develop this muscle, it gets easier and easier and easier. Mm -hmm. The second G is you have to be grateful for what you have and don't focus on what you don't have. Yeah. And if you're concerned what other people have or what they, uh, uh, their lifestyle is or what the relationships are like and you don't have that, it's going to be painful. Mm -hmm. So if you look at your hands, yeah. okay, when was the last time you thanked them? I never thank my hands. Yeah, imagine doing uh, anything without them. You see, you've never thanked them, yet they've done everything for you. Yeah. You see, Th these are the things that are important. It doesn't matter whether you have a Rolls Royce or a million dollars in the bank. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. This is the important stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, as you focus on gratitude, it gets easier and easier to be grateful. So I'll give you an example. I was on the Richard Branson's Island, first day of seven days, and uh, we, we were taken for a walk and I was wearing uh, uh, sandals, yeah. flip-flops actually, and the flip-flop broke and I slipped and fell. Guess what I grabbed? Richard Branson? <laughs> no, worse than that. Oh no, not his top. <laughs> I slipped and fell and grabbed a cactus. Oh no! <laughs> I had about two hundred barbs in my hand. Oh no! But I was upset for two minutes. Then I was grateful. Why is that? Because nobody you had... else did it. Huh? Because nobody else did it. No. Nope. So because you had your hands to fill the pain in. Well, no, I, I really did not enjoy the pain. <laughs> but I'll tell you why. It was my hand. Yeah. This is my tennis playing hand. <laughs> because I was due to play him at tennis. Yeah. Right. So I could find a way of playing with just one hand. Yeah. So the thing is, it, it's something that I had developed, asking and seeking what could be grateful here. How could I be grateful here? Mm -hmm. So when you ask these quality questions, like I asked you, where else did you give? Where else, where else? I'm asking you a quality question. I didn't ask you, did you give? I said, where did you give? Two different questions. Okay. okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So gratitude is a muscle. As you develop it, it gets easier and easier and easier. Mm -hmm. And it makes you feel so much better. Yeah. So an exercise that your uh, readers and uh, listeners can do is to write down 30 things they're grateful for and notice how they feel as they write them down. Yeah. And would you it's recommend doing thing. that daily? Like, um, I, I, I do a lot of gratitude things in the morning, but I only do five, to be fair. Um, it gets a bit, yeah, it gets a bit, I do struggle to think of more. So would you suggest that 30 should be something you should do daily and challenge yourself to push to that? I, I wouldn't, this is what I would do. That's I would get a not. master list. Okay, so write down 30 mm -hmm. and if anything, else you think of to be grateful for put it on that list mm -hmm. then whenever you know you're feeling down look at the list mm -hmm. and i promise you you'll start feeling better see a lot of people uh, do these lists but they're lists and they're not actually being grateful they're doing gratitude yeah, yeah. so the secret is you have to be mm -hmm. okay you have to be grateful it's a doing it's a being not a doing mm -hmm. okay so, uh, you know, C Caroline, I, I, like, I like what you're doing. Five in the morning is good. But instead of just listing them, just be present, you know. Just thank you. Really appreciate that. You know? And, you know, be it. You know, just spend time in it. Don't say, oh, I'm grateful for my, uh, my hands, my teeth, my legs, my eyes, my nose. Now, that doesn't mean anything. But really just get present to it and enjoy it and mm -hmm. immerse yourself in that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the yeah. final G is you have to grow emotionally, physically, spiritually, and mentally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Claire, you grew emotionally today. Yeah. Did you know that? Say it again. 
did you know that you grew emotionally today? Um, most probably because it's been an emotional day. I've had to get over a few things today. <laughs> yeah, so you grew. Yeah. You see? Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So if you keep on working on those three Gs, give, grow, gratitude, mm. everything will raise everything else. So whenever, like today, you had a bad day, yeah? Which of those three Gs was at the lowest level today? Was it giving, was it growing, or was it gratitude? Growing, I would imagine. Yeah, which part of growing? Uh, my, because you're stuck, when, when you have a bad day, you're stuck in a rut, aren't you? You're stuck in an emotional state. Good. So, so it's have, emotional. Yeah, so, so you have to um, get, get over it, so to speak, by putting in things that plan so that you can get yourself out of that emotional state. So you put things okay. into practice that, so you've learned by what's happened today. Okay, so the question is, what was your lowest G today? Growing. Yeah, which part of growing was the lowest? Uh, the emotional. Yeah, good. It's not rocket science. Okay. Okay. So what, once you know, you know what, my lowest G today, yeah. I'm feeling sad is that I, I need to work on my emotional side. Yeah. Then you ask a question, how can I increase that? How can I get better at that? Mm -hmm. You know, and if, it, if say something happens, say, for example, you drop something and it broke mm -hmm. and it's something very valuable or very important to you. Mm -hmm. So great, you know, I'm upset about that. What can I let go of? Yeah. Why is it so important to me? How is it hurting me? How is it affecting my happiness, my health, my joy? Mm -hmm. And is there anything I can do about it? No. Am I prepared to let it go? Am I prepared to change the way I feel about it? So then it doesn't have to be an emotion fixing an emotion. It can be very, very clear and very smooth process. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. just... So, so Sorry, I was yeah. just going to say, so that just proves or like um, stimulates that feeling low and feeling sad is all a part of life. We're all going to go through that and feel those emotions, but it's learning how to overcome them so they become a learning situation for us rather than something we dwell on. It is, and, and, and it's also uh, something around attachment. So imagine you, you have a kid, he falls down, he'll cry, but then he'll stop and then he'll be happy. Mm -hmm. he's not attached to that pain so when something happens and it upsets us the more attachment you have to it and the more resistance you have to it saying look you know i shouldn't be sad i shouldn't be i shouldn't be i shouldn't be it'll get it'll persist mm -hmm. so the the, the this three-way test gives you clarity on the area you need to work on mm -hmm. and it gives you focus so you don't get overwhelmed mm-hmm so it gives you very, very uh, uh, clear things that you can do. So if, if say you have an emotional day, say, you know what, I'm just going to take the day off. Yeah. If I can, I'm just going to get a massage. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Gives you clarity. And that's what people are looking for. And the only way to get clarity is through awareness. Yeah. Awareness gives you clarity. Yeah. Clarity gives you focus. Focus mm -hmm. gives you action. Action gives you results and results gives you momentum. You cannot be in love. You cannot be successful. You cannot be happy. You cannot be fulfilled without mm -hmm. awareness. That's yeah. the master discipline. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone who would say that they struggle when things do go bad and they're very aware of the fact that they should be overcoming that feeling, but they're struggling to get rid of that feeling? What would be a point for them to use to try and overcome that? That's an amazing question. So you have to break it down into sections. The first question you ask yourself is what happened? Okay. And then you, you, you sometimes tell the story. Oh, he stabbed me in the back. Okay, great. All right. Then you ask yourself what actually happened? What actually happened was my wife didn't call me back. Mm. The next question is what's the story or what's the meaning I put behind this? Well, she didn't call me back. She doesn't love me. She doesn't honor me. She doesn't respect me. She doesn't care about me. Okay, good. So what happened was she didn't call me back. And what is this costing me? How is this hurting me? 
well, I'm upset, I'm frustrated, I'm angry, I don't feel respected. Uh, you know, it's just not right. Okay. And how is that affecting life? Well, I'm losing my energy, vitality. I'm not talking to my, my friends nicely, blah, blah, blah. So it's great. Now, are you committed to being that way? Or do you want to commit to being happy? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a happy guy. I'm the happiness expert. I should, you know, be happier. Great. So if you're committed to being happy, what is one thing you could let go of? What is it one thing you could change? What is it that you could change about how you feel about this? Mm. Could you do something else? Could you be willing to, you know, just to see what actually happened mm -hmm. in, re in, in reality? So you're just breaking down the, the little sections. And when you chunk it down, it's, it's a lot easier to eat. Yeah. Mm. And break down. Yeah. If you have a particular situation, I, I'm happy to, to, to go through with you. Um, um, do you know, mine was what we were just talking about earlier, about the dog poo situation. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll let it yeah. go. And I just, I can't, no, I can't. And even though I've been out and I've done the right, well, I say the right thing, the right thing for me to go out and pick it all up. I mean, there's other people who have children around here, which I don't have children, but I have a dog and I pick up after her. And it was like, to me, it was, it, the reason it bothered me is because I'm thinking, well, if, I, if I'm doing it, you should be. But that's my expectation of all people having the same morals as me, which obviously they don't. But I really struggled to let it go for a little bit. And I was really agitated by it. So, and I was like, why can't I get it, let this go? <laughs> well, uh, Carol, I, I, I agree with what you're telling me about, you know, dog poo. It's one of my pet peeves. But there's another way to have handled this. Not picked okay. it up. No, no, no. So let's role play. You be the manager, not be you. Okay. Mr. Manager, you know, um, I complained about this situation and I picked up 32 pieces of dog poo today. Yeah, yeah, it's been noted. It has been reported by other tenants as well. Okay. So may I ask, how important is this to you? Oh, I didn't ask that. I didn't ask yeah. that. They just said they were sending a letter, so I left it go. <laughs> yes, there you go. Can you see? So, Mr. Manager, how committed are you to fixing this problem? Sending a firm letter. We're sending out a firm letter in the next seven working days. You know, that's not good enough. You know what I'll do? I'm going to pick up all the poop tomorrow, every single day. I will deposit the poop on your desk. Well, that's not very nice. It's not my dog who pooed there. Exactly. Oh, I love that. Damn you! Should've, I should have run them after this call. <laughs> and do you know? Do you know there are children in this uh, area? We are aware it's actually a parent who's complained about the um, mess. Yeah. And do you know what dog poop does to a human being if it's ingested? Mm, I am not aware. I am, but they weren't. Yeah, it causes blindness in some kids. It's got severe toxins in. Yeah, it's called toxoplasmosis. And I'm sure you don't want to have that on your head for the rest of your life. I really wish I rung them after this call, Emil. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it to again tomorrow. Say, look, this is the second day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And really put the shit outside their room, outside their office. You see, when you experience it yourself and you yeah. get into that place, they do something about it. But if it's like, okay, but if, if, you, if, you, if you don't stand up for the kids, who's going to stand up for them? Mm -hmm. yeah. so we have a commitment as human beings to be the greatness that we are within us, to be so amazing that we cannot be ignored. Mm. You know, Caroline, if you do this, you never know whose life you will impact. People will always remember what you did for them. Yeah, no, that's you can be that vigilante in wish list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they call me some things, but I don't think it's vigilante. <laughs> so you, and you can have fun around this too. I can see you having a lot of fun around this. <laughs> yes, a lot, too Often. much. <laughs> see, I, I you just... ask quality questions and you get quality answers. And you know, if you're committed to something, there's also, you'll always find a way. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Quality questions, quality answers. And I, lo I love what you just said as well. Be amazing. So you cannot be ignored. 
and you ask quality questions, you could get quality, quality answers back. Um, and then how do you actually, when, when because in, in business, I've come across it quite a lot um, in um, our, because we've been running the dog sledding trips for dog sledding business for nine, nine years now. And you come across, you can come across sometimes how, um, uh, other people or businesses as well who expect a lot from you. Um, and then how, and, and people got a different mindset, haven't they, to, to you. So they've of got, so, so when, so when people think about things or when you answer them or, or sometimes what's in their head, what comes out of their mouth is completely different to yours. So how about effective, um, if effective sort of communication um, so that you can actually get more out of people so that you can, you can actually give to people. Cause sometimes when you give, give, give to people, they can actually take advantage of you as well. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and then, and then it can turn, you know, and their mindset can turn. So in, in business it's, it's quite difficult. I think sometimes to actually um, get your communication over there. And, and then sometimes people have already decided what they're thinking before it comes out, before you've even said something. Okay. So let's role play. You be the uh, business, uh, I'll be the business person and you be the client. Okay. Okay. So Claire, um, how did you like my proposal? Um, it was okay. It was interesting. Okay. So I, I noticed that you weren't enthusiastic about this. So obviously there's something in there mm. that uh, is uncomfortable for you. So may I ask what that is? Well, it was the, the, the point that you wanted me to speak. Um, this is actually something that has happened that you wanted me to speak free of charge. Okay. So if, if I could speak, uh, if I could get you to, uh, if I could get, um, uh, a payment to you, would you speak? Would it? Sorry. So what you're saying to me is that you, you would come and speak if we got you a payment. Yes. Okay. And what payment do you think would be fair? Oh, I'm not sure. Well, you know, I, I'd love for you to speak, but you know, I need to know a number mm -hmm. because um, it has to be fair for me. It has to be fair for you and fair for the audience. And I want to be completely fair. You're an amazing speaker and everyone would enjoy you being there. And you know what? You would probably get some customers and clients. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll help you on the social media. We'll do some flies for you. We'll do some flies for you privately. We'll help you market yourself, mm -hmm. you know? There's, there's a win-win for you and for us. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, um, so let me ask you a question. On your marketing side, um, where are you stuck? I don't have any people come in to my business. Okay, good. So would you let me help you with some of my marketing skills? Yeah. In exchange for coming to speak. Yes. See, it's never the money. It's never the money. No. It's the feeling. Yeah. You know, it's an exchange. It's always mm -hmm. an exchange. Well, if oh. you could help me with my marketing and you get me some clients, of course I'll come and speak. So that, that's the giving then, isn't it? So you, you, you're solving that problem then to serve a need. Yes. You if have you to get into problem. their head and yeah. ask questions. You know, where are you stuck? I noticed that you weren't enthusiastic. Most of my people are very enthusiastic. Obviously there's something there. Yeah. You know? It's listening, so isn't it? You, you, you overcome their, their uh, objections. Yeah. I had the same once. We have two ears to listen and one mouth to speak. And it yes. really resonated with me. I was like, wow, that's actually quite a poignant thing to be said. And it's true. I mean, obviously it's true. We've got two ears. <clears throat> um, but I mean, the point behind it, yeah, listening yeah. gives you a better understanding rather than trying to tell someone what you want to give them. Listening to their needs, I uh, he could tell you were um, hesitant in your uh, like, oh yeah, it was okay. He listened to your tone of voice, not necessarily just the words you're saying; it's the tone of voice, body language, etc. Which we all are. Uh, and the other thing I've heard as well is observe. So you've got two ears to listen, two eyes to observe, and one mouth. 
Yay. Yes. You're adding things so, in there. Yeah. So what I see and what I hear yeah. is, so they, they, they feel seen and they feel heard. Yeah. Most of the time, no one feels that way. You're not yeah. listening to me. You're not seeing what I'm saying. You see? So it's that connection. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Mm -hmm. So I would always leave the toilet seat up on my um, uh, bathroom and my wife would get upset. I'm on One her side. Said, <laughs> One day she said, honey, every time you do that, I can't love you as much. Mm. See, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. If she's nagging me, I'm going to do it deliberately. But if she <laughs> changes her tone, it's a different result. It's a result for me because I'm inspired to be even more kind in other areas. Yeah, absolutely. I must tell you that this was back then when I was not uh, an evolved human being. It's not today. I'd be too scared to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he knows his place now. He knows the toilet seat belongs down. Yes. Um, some of the, the and a question I have for you as well is that you you've had connections like we said I did get it wrong I apologise for that uh, with Tony Robbins, Les Brown, and um, top athletes and, and Richard Branson. Could you just um, explain maybe to um, the, because we're in Sweden so this is going to be promoted out to Sweden. Um, it's like it's not bragging that you've got these connections with it with these these wonderful people but how important is actually connecting with um these top entrepreneurs for your business so let's say for a business like like caroline is a one-man band i'm a one-man band at the moment how important is it for our business and help our businesses um to be connecting with these people networking zero okay <laughs> unless they, they are pivotal to your requirements. Yeah. You see, it's not the, it's not the, uh, I mean, I, it was purely by chance I got connected to these people, mm -hmm. but they, they, they don't make the difference to my business. Okay. So they haven't it helped. It really doesn't. They, they have a little bit, but there's other people who've helped my business explode. Yeah. But it, it gives you kudos. It gives you uh, credibility. Yeah. And that's the secret. You know, who you spend time with is who you become. Your 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 network is your network. So, yeah. if 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 you need uh, to work with a particular individual, make a friendship with them. I mean, the the, the times I've had with Richard, it's it's all all uh, non business. Okay. Everything is non business with him. Mm -hmm. You know. And then from going to his island, you get to meet other people. That's how we met you, isn't it? Well, met you met me through Tracy actually. Yeah, yeah. So you, Tracy. But yeah. Because I met I met Tracy and Paul, yeah. but I didn't meet Tracy and Paul first. I met Dawn first. Yeah. So yeah. Dawn, Tracy, and Paul. Yeah. Then uh, you know we went on this, and then we met you. So it's it's the connections that you make. It's the relationships, and yeah. Paul and Tracy are amazing at uh, connections and and keeping those connections up. Yeah. So. The, the, the lesson I would give everybody is this. Work on connections. Work on relationships. Maintain your relationships. The two most important things in life are relationships and health. The thing is more important. Yeah. No, I, um, in, I know, as you're saying, like, they weren't massively impactful to the growth of your business. But as individuals, what did you learn that you've implemented into your business to help it grow from them just by meeting them? Great question. So from Richard, I learned two things. One is you always say yes and work it out afterwards. So I was asked to speak in front of a, a, a crowd of 10,000 people. And I thought, no, I don't want to do this. You know, mm. I'm scared. But I said, you know what? Yes, it has to be a yes. You know, this is an opportunity. So I did. But it was scary. Yeah. But when you say yes, you become a different human being. And you start thinking differently. You act differently. Your, your thought patterns change. Mm -hmm. The other one is about, uh, well, again, with Richard, was being humble. He's such a beautiful, humble, caring, loving soul. Um, it was an unbelievable experience. Nothing I, I have experienced before. It's just like, you know, being with my dad. Mm -hmm. And he's always kind to people, generous. One of the greatest skills he has is listening. He always listens. Mm -hmm. He doesn't listen and then reply. 
he'll think and reply. It's, it's a measured response. Mm -hmm. So that that is an absolutely great question, Caroline. You know, whenever you see someone very successful, if you can just get one or two ideas from them of how they show up, what they do. Another thing, he gets up at 5 a.m. in the morning. And guess how long I've been getting up at 5 a.m.? Guess how long? I don't know. You don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he can keep that trait to himself. He can have that one. <laughs> yeah, that's his. Yeah, yeah. You can keep that bit. I'll, I'll take the other bits. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you know, and you don't, you don't have to do everything that they do. You know, people say, "Oh, I want to be like Tony Robbins. I want to be." No, don't be like them. Be like yourself. What works for you works for you. You know, your vibrational energy is this. Don't do that. Don't do something that's not aligned with you. But there's always something to be learned from the people who have achieved what you're trying to achieve, regardless if it's one thing or 10, or if it's one person or 10 that you coll um, collate together, there's always something to be achieved. So i.e. with your audience, Claire, with what we were saying, even though they may not be impactful to their business in that day, or even in that immediate month, the lessons that they can learn from it and develop from for their business could be, well, unlimited, really, couldn't they? Yeah. So yeah. Just, just one thing you learn can make the difference. And I always, whoever I meet, there's always something I can learn from that one person. Mm -hmm. Even if they're, they're, they're not the nicest of people, the lesson I learned was that, you know what? I don't want to be like him. Yeah. yeah. It's always something to learn from someone. Listen for the gold and don't think you know everything. You know, try and be the dumbest person in the room. That, that's easy for me, really. But you know, <laughs> just, just look, for, look for the gold, look for the beautiful sentence, look for how people show up and how they don't show up. So you know what? I saw that man was a little bit rude. I, I want to make sure I never do that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's people always will always, sorry, people will always remember you made them feel. So I, I've coached professional tennis players and I tell them, look, you have these fans, spend two or three minutes extra, extra, signing balls, taking photos, because, you know, they come out to see you. And when your career is finished, you're going to miss this. Yeah. And I, and I think that happens, like, with tennis players and also in business as well, is that, that um, for, exa for an example, that um, I used to rent a car because when we go back to the UK, I rent, I rent a car. And... Um, and I always look for the cheapest option, like not the not the bit not the the very cheapest, but the next one up and the cheapest option. And I don't care; it's got four wheels and a steering wheel. As long as I get me from A to B, I don't care. It need I hate spending money on cars. And then um, that's a strong it, word. I, no, it is. I hate spending money on cars. It's not strong, but I don't like spending money. I don't like putting fuel in. <laughs> I'm one of those people who just put as least fuel in as possible. <laughs> And stop, so she's like, oh, not a penny over, not a penny oh, over. Oh. <laughs> so, so it's a big thing for me. That, that would be the title of your book. What's that? Not a penny over. Not yeah, a penny I think over. so. Yeah. yeah. Not oh. a penny over. Hmm. But then, um, and then Tracy put me in, co in connections with a guy um, named Jonathan. Now, his customer service was second to none. I actually could ring him up any time and say, I need a car. He had a car at Gatwick Airport for me. Um, when we arrived at the airport, because we were panicking, we were going to be late because the, the, the plane had arrived late. We got there, the keys were there. You, you didn't need hardly any of the kerfuffle that you have normally when you hire a car. Literally, your driving license, thank you, there's your car, off you go. And then they picked my car up then that I hired from my house the other end. And I paid a little bit more, so I didn't get it. it was the customer service. It's like, so like you say, um, uh, Anil, it's not about the, the actual money. It's about the customer service and it's the giving. And it's the, the you know, and the friendliness. He was so friendly. Um, he was friendly. He was giving, you know, and he, had, and he solved the problem and he served my needs. So, so, and now I won't hesitate. I would always go to him. Yeah, no, that, yeah you don't was... forget that way. People make you feel. No. Yeah. He, he was being so amazing that he, uh, he could not be ignored. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And you're a raving fan. I'm thinking, oh, well, I contact Jonathan too, you know? Jonathan Armstrong so, it that... is, isn't it? Jonathan Armstrong, yeah. I knew it. As soon as you said the name Jonathan, I knew who it was because I know how it, I've not even hired a car of him, but I would recommend people to because yeah. when I met him just like, as a person, he was so lovely. Yeah. Yeah. 
and and I'm not that pushy salesperson as well. It's like, hi Claire, you know, really friendly. He's like my best friend on the phone, and and then it, it's just like I want to deal with you all the time now. Yeah. And I think that's an important in business as well when when you are dealing dealing with with them um, yeah. in business as well uh, two ex example of that eon i had a problem with eon on monday and the first time i called up it was a palaver with my um oh there's just for reasons there's many other providers of utilities out there um, <laughs> um and i had a problem with the the meter and the first person i spoke to was rude and i put the phone down because i was like i am not speaking to them that was the way they were speaking to me was quite disgusting so i was like well, i'm going to call back up but i called up with a preempted feeling that I was ready for war basically and I was going in with my war hat on I was like right I'm solving this and the woman could not have been any nicer and in the end we were sat talking for about 10 minutes about her and her Dyson hair dryer and, and <laughs> curries and things like that. we were just talking about loads of things in the end and she completely changed that whole concept that I had of idea I had about customer services in that establishment just because she took the time to listen speak and make me feel good yeah yeah, yeah. it's a beautiful thing it's effortless yeah. yeah it costs nothing to be nice no yeah no and and i think that with um with with the the networking events as well you know it, it's like when when you're approachable when you're at events or something it's, it's all about building relationships and everything we just said yeah. you know when you when you're going into the networking and you want to build relationships it's, it's using that um theory then to actually build relationships and then eventually business will come from it well, you know, the secret to networking is this. Listen, yeah. observe, and ask them, how can I serve you? A lot of people, here, here's my card, you know, call me. No, I'm sorry. Mm. How can I and serve you? you? And be honest about it. Help as many people as you can, and they will come back to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you forget those people easily. The ones you've got the business cards, and sorry to anyone who watches this who I offend, but I've forgotten about yeah. them. I'm like, yeah. I've got your business card, but oh yeah, I know you do that. And maybe one day if I ever do need anybody, I may think about that, but I'm probably going to go to Google because that's easier yeah. for me to do. Whereas if someone made a good impression on me, I'm going to want to go to them because I know I'm going to get a good mm. service. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah um, that's how I, I got connected with Richard Branson, Mike Tyson, uh, all sorts of people oh, by God. serving them. I said, how can I serve you? May I give you a gift? Oh, great. How? And then, then you start that conversation. It's not about you. You don't say, oh, look, I'm the greatest relationship expert on the planet. You know, why don't you get my advice? No. How can I serve you? Do you mind if I give you some advice about, you know, bringing up children? You know, this is my thoughts on this. So mm. you're giving them, you're not selling them anything. And that's the secret. It's all about relationships, mm. everything. Yeah. And I agree. We'll come with it. So what we've got today, because I think we've got four minutes left before Neil has to leave, is that um, your three theories are giving, gratitude and growing. Mm -hmm. And I think I got from be amazing, you cannot be ignored and quality questions and quality answers. Yeah. What, what people think of you. What people think of you. Did you get anything? Sorry. What other people think of you is none of your business. I know Caroline has always was that way. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's me. I don't care what people think. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. You know, when somebody comes up to you and they and they'll say, "Guess what so and so said?" I say, "Oh, none of my business. None of my business." <laughs> I'm, yeah. I just take away neg negativity in my life and I've made some cutthroat choices over the last cu couple of months and I mean cutthroat to the fact that I don't actually have any friends anymore. <laughs> I don't know where they've gone. <laughs> They're all gone. <laughs> um, but I feel better for it. I, I don't, I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered by it at all. The main thing I'd say I've learned from today is the, the master list. Instead of doing the, it's obviously to keep doing the grateful things in the morning because I like to do these in the morning because they kind of set me off on a, you know, if you've had a bad night's sleep or, you know, sometimes I can just wake up in an irritated mood and I don't know why but once I write that list I feel great better but seeing that list of the mass list of the 30 things for the major days you know the things when people poo outside and don't pick it not people dogs <laughs> poo outside and don't pick it up those <laughs> days you know the days when you need to shift that feeling and you just don't know why just to remember and be grateful and that's definitely something I'm going to be taking away um and the how can I serve you so right now I'm going to be trying to evaluate for me and myself and my business mm -hmm. how I can best position things for others on how I can serve them rather than what yeah. I can actually offer them to before what they can buy yeah. from me <laughs> 
and uh, quality questions. Yeah. You know, dig dig deeper. You know, how how committed are you to fixing this solution? Yes. Yeah, and you know, and it doesn't have to be confrontational. It's just asking the right questions, getting into their head, and mm -hmm. making them realize how important it is. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, that's definitely a good one. Really, really good. And the the give, like, why the understanding of where you give. I wouldn't even even thought about the fact that I fed my dog or took yeah. her out for a walk or, you know, uh, I was thinking that I'd said thank you to the guy who come in and stored my smart meters and like things like that. And I'm like, well, we can't, he did do something for a thanks. So I guess he was entitled to it, but I didn't like you say the thank you for your hands. The things that you just generally don't think of to thank. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to go and thank my fridge in a minute because I'm starving. Yeah, really. It's, it's an important thing. Imagine life without the fridge, without uh, air. Yeah. Uh, I know I always thank the trees and people call me a tree hugger, which I really don't like. But when I walk the dogs, I touch the tree and always say thank you. I feel like you can feel life in a tree. Um, so, yeah. you know, and I, I thank I the a, universe. I had a, a thought about a tree this morning. You know what a tree does every morning? Yeah. It basks in the sunshine. Oh. Well, if you live in Manchester, it's the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> But the sunshine is always there, but it just welcomes the day in, you know. I was just, the sun was just rising and I thought, wow, these trees are getting it all. How beautiful is that? Oh, I knew you've made me feel inspired to go out and do my yoga outside now in the mornings. There you go. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. I'm, I'm in the five o'clock club, Anil. Thank me you too. <laughs> yeah, right. Five p.m. club. I should have said five o'clock in the evening. <laughs> Um, There's two yeah. five o'clocks, you know, in the day. <laughs> I know, I'm normally asleep Indeed. by 5 p.m. <laughs> um, thank you so much. You've given us so many golden nuggets today, Anil. Fantastic, my um, pleasure. And then, just as a thank you for coming on, how can people uh, connect with you if they want to connect you? Is there anything that you've got to offer right now if people wanted to come on any mastermind, on any courses? Is it, is it anything that you would like to um, say to the audience? Actually, there are a couple of things. If you want to find out how happy you are, go to myhappytest.com. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you've enjoyed this interaction and you want three days of this on relationships, mindset, success, fulfillment, I have a three-day virtual um, retreat coming up. And it's uh, retreatwithanil.com. Okay. And it's going to be three days of, uh, you know, deep conversations, role-playing, um, coaching, guiding, nurturing, and uh, people seeing amazing breakthroughs. So that's July the 24th, 25th, and 26th. And um, recordings will be available for VIP, so you can always uh, access them. And it'll be an amazing event, for sure. Retreat with And how happy you are is myhappytest.com. Myhappytest.com. Have you written yep. that down? We'll put it in the link then, my happy test. Yep, I've written it down. I actually did the test myself. Turns out I'm not that happy. <laughs> <laughs> I will be contacting you, Caroline. <laughs> yes, I think so. Oh, dear, dear. Yeah. I must have done I, it on I, a bad day. <laughs> no, you're, you're a lot happier than you think you are. You can see where I work with her, can't you, Anil? <laughs> yeah. See, see I, what I see is that um, you accept you know, um, yourself as you are and you don't let other people bother you. And that's so powerful because other people are uh, living their lives a football of other people's opinion. And it's horrible. It's mm -hmm. horrible. Yeah. Good. And I, they live like by other people's standards. I set my own. And sometimes my standards can be down there, but sometimes they're up there. But as long as they suit me, I don't care. <laughs> oh. Fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Anil. It's been lovely. Thank you, thank you, thank you, so, you so much. It's been a pleasure. Right. Thank you, Anil. Bye-bye. Thank you, Bye -bye. Thanks, Caroline. Bye. Bye.